Welcome. In this video, we are going to see the experimental techniques, which is the second unit of IGCAC CAE chemistry. This is the syllabus of second unit. First chapter is measurements. In this chapter, we are going to see the appropriate apparatus to measure time, temperature, mass, volume of liquids and gases. First one, time. In chemistry, time is one of the important dependence. For most of the chemical reactions, time has to be measured. So time can be measured using stop clock or digital stopwatch with one or two decimal places for more accuracy. Units of time are seconds or minutes. As we know already, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Next, temperature. Temperature is also one of the important dependence. For example, in some chemical reactions, temperature impacts a major e change. Even quality or quantity of the product may change due to the temperature change in a chemical reaction. Temperature is measured by thermometer. For more accuracy, digital thermometer can be used. Units of temperature is degree Celsius. Next, mass. Mass is measured by digital weighing balance. To avoid interference of air, balance should be covered like this. Usually for chemical reactions, we use grams as the unit of mass because of the small batch chemical reactions, we get products in grams only. Next, volume of liquids. Usually liquids in the sense we measure solvents or other reagents for chemical reactions and these are the apparatus that we are using for chemical reactions. For approximate volumes, measuring cylinders can be used. For example, solvents can be measured using measuring cylinders. Pipettes are the most accurate way of measuring a volume of liquid. For example, if to a chemical reaction exactly 20 ml of a reagent to be added, in those cases we can use pipettes to measure. Next, burettes. Burettes are the most accurate way of measuring a variable volume of liquid. Usually, we use burettes in qualitative analysis, that means in titrations. Next, well, for approximate uh, measurements, beakers or conical flasks can be used in chemical laboratories. Next, volume of gases. A gas syringe is usually the apparatus used to measure the volume of gas. This is, uh, this is called gas syringe system. As shown in this picture, gas syringe is connected with an apparatus in which reaction is taking place. If the product is a gas, then volume of gas produced can be measured in gas syringe. See this video here inside the test tube, a chemical reaction is taking place. When the reaction is started, the product that is gas is produced and the gas is reaching the syringe through a tube. You can see the syringe piston is going back due to the gas is occupying in this syringe. This is how a gas syringe is used to measure the volume of gas. Next chapter is criteria of purity. In this chapter we can understand how to use the purity of substances using paper chromatography. Chromatography is a technique that can be used to find the individual components in a mixture. If a substance containing two or more components, then we can find the all individual components using paper chromatography. Usually filter papers are used as a chromatography paper in paper chromatography. First, a strip of chromatography paper is placed on a clean and dry flat surface. If impurities are sticked in the paper, then they will definitely interfere in the result. So table should be clean and dry. A horizontal line is drawn using a ruler and a pencil about 3 cm from the base of the paper strip. The reason for using pencil is the line should not smudge because of the solvent. A single dot is added to the middle of the horizontal line. To hold the paper up, paper to be attached to a pencil using stick sticky tape or pin. Paper is then lowered into the solvent container. The pencil line should be 
placed above the level of the solvent. The line should not place into the solvent line. Fine glass tube like in the picture is used to put the pigment onto the pencil spot on the paper. Dot should be as much as possible smaller in size then only the component separation will be neat and clear. This is how the chromatogram should be. See the paper is sticked in the pencil and there is a pencil line in the middle and the sample dot is on the middle line and the line is above the solvent line. Different substances have different solubility so will travel at different rates. For example, mud and salt do not have same solubility in water. So, salt will dissolve faster than the mud. Like that each substance has its own solubility rate. As the solvent moves up this paper, the pigments will initially move along with the solvent and eventually the solvent will move ahead of these pigments. All substances will move particular distance from the starting line along with the solvent but solvent will move ahead of the substances. When the solvent line approaches the top of the paper strip to be removed. A pencil is used to mark how far the solvent has moved up the paper. This is called the solvent front. Again the reason for using pencil is it will not smudge in the solvent. See the solvent is moved ahead of these substances and this line is called solvent front and also see there are so many dots in the paper and they are separated pigments from the mixture. A ruler is used to measure the distance traveled by the solvent front from the horizontal pencil line which means that from the starting line. These two values can be used to calculate the individual retention factor for each pigment. A retention factor can be calculated by using this formula. Rf is equal to distance traveled by the component divided by distance traveled by the solvent. Now we are going to make a paper chromatography of blue and red ink mixture. This is how the paper should be prepared for chromatography. Put a dot in the middle. Take the sample using capillary tube and put a drop of the mixture on the dot. Allow the paper to dry. Now the paper is kept inside the solvent beaker and the pencil line is above the solvent level. Now our sample is slowly moving along with the solvent. See blue and red inks got separated. Mark the distance that the solvent moved from the starting line and this line is called as solvent front. Dry the filter paper and mark the middle of the samples and measure the distance that the samples travel from the starting line. Now calculate the RF value. In a mixture, if two or more substances are the same, then we will get identical chromatograms. If the substance is a mixture with different components, we will get different chromatograms. Pure substance will show up with only one spot whereas impure substance will show more than one. Because of the impurities we will get more. Next important thing is locating agents. In some cases samples will be invisible which means samples will be colorless. In those cases it will be hard to find the distance traveled by the sample. For example, in proteins and amino acids, we cannot see the sample separation. In such cases, locating agents can be used to make the samples visible. After the chromatography run, locating agents to be sprayed on the paper. Look at the video, solvent has reached the solvent front, but still we cannot see any sample separation in this paper. Now the paper has to be dried. After drying the locating agent to be sprayed on the chromatogram paper and the paper to be dried again. After drying now you can see the sample separation in the filter paper. Next chapter is assessing purity. In the previous unit we have seen that pure substances melt and boil at specific and sharp temperatures. 
For example, pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, whereas salt or sugar added water boiling points exceeds. Mixtures have a range of melting and boiling points. To distinguish pure substances from mixtures, melting and boiling points data can be used. Mixtures melt over a range of temperatures as they contain two or more substances. See in this video pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If some salt is added the boiling point of water rises then 100 degrees Celsius. Now you can see that the temperature is increasing than 100 degrees Celsius. If we add more salt the boiling point continues to rise. From this what we come to know is pure substances have specific and sharp boiling points but impure substances have different boiling and melting points. Last chapter in this unit is methods of purification. First mixture of solids. For purification of solids that have differences in size, density, magnetic properties, sublimation and solubility can be used. For example, different size solids can be separated by sieving. Look at this video, the different particle size solids are separated by sieving. Next one, solubility. For example, salt can be separated from sand using this solubility method because sand is insoluble in water but salt is soluble in water. So the mixture to be dissolved in the water and allow the sand to settle down at the bottom and decay in the upper mother liquid and by further process salt can be separated from the water. Now the sand is separated from salt. Next separation of liquids. Immiscible liquids can be separated using a separating funnel or by decanting. This apparatus is called separating funnel. Immiscible liquids to be added in the separating funnel. Mix well and allow to settle down. Now open the tap and separate the lower layer in a beaker separately. And the upper layer can be taken in an another beaker. This is how immiscible liquids can be separated using separating funnel. And the next method is filtration. Filtration is used to separate an undissolved solid from a mixture of solid and a liquid. For example, at home we are filtering tea dust using strainer. In lab, filter paper is placed in the filter funnel above a beaker. When the mixture is poured into that, filter paper will only allow small liquid particles to pass through as the filtrate. Solid particles are too large to pass through the filter paper. so will stay behind as a residue. See the filter paper is placed in a filter funnel above a beaker. When undissolved solid to be separated from liquid like this we can use filtration method. The small liquid particles are only passing through the filter paper and the solid stay behind in the filter paper. The liquid which is collected in the beaker is called filtrate. Next method is crystallization. Crystallization is used to separate a dissolved solid from solution when the solid is much more soluble in hot solvent than in cold. The solution is heated allowing the solvent to evaporate to leave a saturated solution behind. The saturated solution is allowing to cool slowly and solids will come out of the solution as the solubility decreases and crystals will grow. Crystals are collected by filtering the solution and they are washed with cold distilled water to remove impurities and allow to cool, allow to dry. This is copper sulfate solution and the aim is to separate copper sulfate solid from water. This solution is heated and allowing to cool. To test if the solution is saturate, saturated by dipping a clean dry cold glass rod into the solution. Take a few drops in the edge and cool it by blowing. If the solution is saturated, crystals will form on the glass rod. Allow the saturated solution to cool. 
Now the crystals are formed after cooling. Now decan the mother liquid slowly and carefully. Wash with ethyl alcohol containing small amount of cold water twice or thrice. Transfer the crystals to the filter paper using spatula and allow to dry nicely. This method is called crystallization. Next method is simple distillation. This method is used to separate a liquid and a soluble solid from a solution. Example water from a solution of salt water or a pure water uh, from a mixture of liquids. If we are trying to distill out pure water from salt water initially the solution is heated and pure water evaporates producing a vapor which rises through the neck of the round bottomed flask. The vapor passes through the condenser where it cools and condenses turning out pure water which is collected in a beaker. After all the wave water vapor is evaporated from the solution only the solid solute will be left behind in the round bottom flask. See the mixture of liquids is boiling in the round bottom flask and the vapor is escaping from the round bottom flask and it is entering into the condenser. Condenser is being cooled by the circulation of cold water and the vapor is getting condensed in, inside the condenser. Condensed pure liquid is collected in this uh, in the another round bottle. Last method is fractional distillation. The difference between simple and fractional distillations uh, is in simple distillation we can separate the mixture of only containing two liquids but in fractional distillation we can separate two or more liquids that are miscible with one another. For example, ethanol and water or acetone and water can be separated using fractional distillation method. The solution is heated to the temperature of the substance with the lowest boiling point. For example, if we have the mixture of ethanol and water, the boiling point of ethanol is around 78 degrees. So initially the mixture is heated to 78 degrees and ethanol to be collected. The liquid with the lowest boiling point will rise and evaporate first and vapors will pass through a condenser where they cool and condense turning into a liquid that will be collected in a beaker. All of the substance is evaporated and collected leaving behind the other components of the mixture. For example if we have the mixture of acetone, ethanol and water. These three liquids are miscible with one another. So initially the mixture to be heated to 56 degrees Celsius that is the boiling point of acetone. Once acetone is collected fully next the mixture to be heated to 70 degrees that is the boiling point of ethanol. Pure water is left behind in the round bottom flask. This is how mixtures of miscible liquids with different boiling points can be separated using this fractional distillation method. This, met, uh, this is called fractional distillation set. Miscible liquids uh, mixture is heated in the conical flask and the pure liquid is collected in the another conical flask. This is what fractional distillation method. Thank you for watching. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.